Talk a lot of ball today. What do you here, coach the quarterbacks? It's about everybody. Outstanding. Great. Okay. My name is Jim Harbaugh. I'm the head football coach at the University of San Diego, right here in town. Uh, been coaching for one year with the uh, Carreros. Uh, two prior years before that, I coached for the Oakland Raiders. Uh, did the quality control the first year, and uh, that was awesome. Was, the Raiders is kind of like a think tank of football under Al Davis. We sat in on the draft meetings, did all the computer drawings, broke down all the film, did all the grunt work. It was great. I mean, just loved it. Learned a lot of football. Uh, Bill Callahan was the head coach. We went to the Super Bowl our first year, so got a real taste of that. The second year, did the quality control again for the Raiders and uh, got to coach uh, the quarterbacks. Uh, didn't get to coach Rich Gannon, the offensive coordinator co coached him, um, but uh, next year uh, kind of went in the tank. So I got to see, see a little bit of uh, everything in my two years coaching with the Raiders. So I've been coaching for three years. Uh, prior to that, I played in the National Football League for 15 years with the uh, Chicago Bears, Indianapolis Colts, Baltimore Ravens, San Diego Chargers, and uh, that was about it, I think. But maybe one year with the Carolina, half a year with the Carolina Panthers. For eight games, but didn't get to play any games. So, uh, been playing quarterback since I was in the third grade. Um, had a lot of good people to be around studying quarterback play. Uh, professionally, uh, Lindy Infante, I think is the best in the business. Um, got some got some teaching from Bill Walsh, uh, which I really appreciated. Bo Schembechler at Michigan, and Mike Ditka in Chicago. Didn't exactly coach the quarterbacks. Uh, they're more into the running game, but uh, Cam Cameron's another mentor of mine, who's uh, the uh, offensive coordinator with the San Diego Chargers. Uh, he was my quarterback coach when I was in college at Michigan, so uh, trained under some really good people. What I want to talk about today, they want me to talk about throwing mechanics, uh, developing the quarterback, the fundamentals, and uh, I'll give you what I know, uh, I'll give you all the drills that I have, uh, if you find that beneficial. Um, and also talk about you know, what it's like, you know, how to throw a football. And uh, it's probably, it's not the most coached thing. You know, it's not the area that I concentrate on the most is actual throwing mechanics. You know, I think there's some, I think there's some basic things that you have to make sure that your quarterback is doing and not doing. Um, but other than that, they, they all throw different. You know, there's no one way to teach a guy how to throw a football. Uh, Everybody's got different mechanics. So you can, you can overcoach throwing the football. And I think that's the thing to, to avoid. And uh, I got a videotape here. It's from the movie, uh, it's from the movie, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie. You guys will probably know it when you see it. But probably one of the better descriptions, one of the better coaching points, CPs that I've ever, ever seen. So let me play that for you real quick. If you can get down here and see this, I think you like this. Tell me if you know the movie. Sandlot. Sandlot! From the movie Sandlot. Oh, I told you, Benny. I told you. Come on, Benny. Why'd you do that? It's square, Benny. It's a square! What the hell is he doing? I don't believe this. Here. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, you know.
think too much. How'd you get straight A's this shit, huh? No, I got a B once. Actually, with A minus. Who did you have been a B? Man, this is baseball. You gotta stop thinking. It's have fun. I mean, if you were having fun, you would have caught that ball. You ever have a paper up? I helped the guy once. Okay. Well, chuck it like you would throw a paper. When your arm gets here, just let go. Just let go. Steady. How do I catch it? Just stand there and stick your glove. All right, so, there it is. Good coaching point, right? You get to here and you let it go. Here, take a paper, roll a paper up sometime. We've all had paper outs, right? Everybody here had a paper out? You're like my, you're like my quarterbacks. None of them have ever had paper out. They don't know how to throw a paper. Roll up a paper, a newspaper. I had a paper out when I was a kid. You take the thing, and when you get it there, you release it. Try it, try it when you're at home. Roll up a paper, put a rubber band around it, and throw it. And that's basically throwing a football. When you get it there, you let it go. Now, a couple more things. Grip. Let's talk about the grip. One of those fingers, that ring finger or the pinky finger, needs to find the laces. I put, I put the ring finger there. Some guys will put the ring and the pinky finger. As long as one of them finds the laces, that's important. That's critical. Now, the next thing is to hold it in the fingers. It doesn't get held in the palm. What happens to a baseball when somebody, when somebody palms the ball? Slows down, right? Palm ball, change up. That's how you throw a change up. You want that thing in the, in the, uh, in the fingers. Basically, when I hold a ball, only fingers and that part of the thumb, and that part of the thumb right there, and the thumb are touching the ball. The rest of the palm is off the ball. So check your quarterback's grip. And the way to check it is to find light in between the ball and the hand. Just come back, just take a look. Hey, show me your grip. Okay? Check it. Okay. You're not holding it in the palm. Now, if you see that, there's no light in between the palm and the ball, then he's got a problem. Secondly, you've got to be able to hold it light. Loose grip, loose arm. You want that thing loose. You want levers working when you're throwing a football. You want to create levers in the throwing motion. Bam. Holding the ball too tight, he starts to feel his forearm tensed up. He starts to feel the bicep or the tricep while he's holding the ball. He's holding the ball too tight. Loose, like holding a bird. Like holding a bird in your hand. Light grip, creates light, light arm. Now, where do you throw it from? Where do you throw a ball from? Some guys teach it, it's here. You know, some guys, it's... Where do you guys teach it at? Up here, up high? Elbow at the, at the ear? That would create a pretty, create a pretty over-the-top throwing motion. That's, that's acceptable. The thing you're looking for is not where he's throwing it or where the elbow is. You know, it doesn't have to be at the ear. It doesn't have to be anywhere but above the shoulder. As long as that elbow is above the shoulder, then you're in business. Anywhere from there to there. And anywhere in between. And everybody, will, everybody throws it different. No one way to throw a football that's right. The thing you want, though, is extension. You want full extension in the throwing motion. So you can achieve that up here, you know, right there, like Brett Favre would. Or you can, you can achieve it out here, or kind of like a David Rivers gets it. You know, as long as the elbow's above the shoulder, anywhere from there to there is full extension. Now, the elbow goes below the shoulder, you can't get full extension. Gets below the shoulder, you lose extension. So guys will say, get your elbow up. Get your elbow up. Just keep the elbow up. Just get it up over the shoulder. I learned that from Bill Walsh. It's a Bill Walsh isn't it? Not where it's at. It's that you get the extension. Now we got a guy, Todd Mortensen was our quarterback this year. And I uh, came from BYU. And he, uh, his throwing motion was way over the top. I mean, his elbow was you know, right at the ear. 
and that thing got way up here, and he got extension. The only flaw he had was he would take it and drop it, and then get it way up here, creating this big windmill throwing motion. So he'd be like, that was, that was the motion. Boom. That takes a while to get out. You create that windmill, that's a long time for that ball. Once you see the receiver open, you get that thing out of your hand and into his hand, that takes some time. There's another one with dropping the ball, like from here and dropping it down, dropping it there. I mean, my, my deal was there, there, bam, bam. And Rich Ganaway is a big dropper. He'll take the thing and, and it comes out there. So he was quick. His, his release was, he dropped it, but it was a quick release because he was so to the side. And he, Gannon was like, back to be there sometimes. You know, but that thing was, bam. Bam. So that's the only, that's the only thing about getting the thing way up here is that the guy, now if the guy's going, bam, like there to there, then he's okay. You just watch the guy who's throwing the ball way over the top and also dropping it because you get a big windmill type of effect. But now, how do you break a guy of that? How do you break Todd Mortensen of this, that windmill effect? It's tough and I'm very slow to break it, you know, and he still isn't out of that because it's, it's hard to change a guy's throwing motion. It's, it's a very difficult thing. How do you tell a guy who's been throwing rocks and baseballs and footballs, you know, his entire life to change and do this and you try to explain it, show it, and it's just, they got to be able to do it and feel it. And, you know, there's, it's, it's tough to change a guy because then he goes, he goes the other way. So I didn't, I didn't tinker with him that much other than just to videotape him and show him. And sometimes you don't, you don't in your own mind know that you think you're emulating somebody, you think you're doing what you've been taught and told, and you just got to see it on tape. You get a video camera and tape your guys. You know, get behind them, get in front of them, they go through their foot with their three step drop, throw to the right, three step drop, throw to the left, five step drop, throw on a curl, five step drop, throw on a curl, throw on a go route. And that's, that's, a, that's the best way to coach them is when they can see it. And they can see what you're talking about. Boy, I, really, I didn't realize I did that. I didn't think I did that when I threw. And you, can, and you just subtly try to change them that way. But they have got to, they, they have got to change it themselves. You got to show them what to do. Say a bad habit. Say you got a bad habit. How many reps do you think it takes to, to get rid of a bad habit? Or to, something you've been habitually done to change it to some, something else? According to Jim Brogan, it takes a thousand reps. It takes a, th a thousand reps to do it. Basketball, guru, Jim Brogan. And I agree with that. It's, it takes a long time to get a guy out of a, out of a habit, something that he's been doing. So, I hope what you got out of that was the grip, find a lace with either the ring finger or the pinky finger, light grip, Show some light in between the hand and the ball. And then when it comes to the throwing motion, the most important thing is what? Extension. Extension and the elbow above the shoulder. Both going, they go together. As long as the elbow is above the shoulder, he can get extension. The elbow goes below the shoulder. Doesn't really, he's not kicking it out with all the levers. Bam. Full extension. Okay. Now. The next thing I would say, another Bill Walsh thing, is in the drop. You know, how do you carry the ball when you're dropping and getting away from center? What's the most important thing? The way he described it is like you're running. When you run, you use your arms. Use your arms when you're running, your arms help you when you run. So the th same thing when you drop. Your arms help you drop. You use your arms in your drop. So where do you carry the ball? This thing is, as long as it's not down here by the belt buckle, somewhere around the numbers, or right in here, between the numbers and the shoulders, that's the ideal place. So here, your arms can swing, 
help you get back. And they work, and they work just like you would if you were running. And that's that's a, that's a lot of it. That's a big part of it. But before you start, let me just jump in here. Before we start talking, get too far into how to throw a ball and how to how to drop and all the finer mechanics and details and and uh, drills and etc. What, what's important about playing quarterback? I mean, guys know how to throw. You get the guy that can throw the best, and you know he's he's probably going to be picked out to be the quarterback when he was in the third or fourth grade. And he's the guy who throws. You find that quarterback. But what are you looking for? What's the most important thing? The okay, thing I tell my guys. You got. Yeah, that's good. I'll ask. Boys is, boys is huge. Huge. Leadership. Leadership is big. Smarts. Smarts. You guys, yeah, and you're on the mental part of the game. And it all talk, ties into, to me, what the most important thing in playing the quarterback position is, is to take care of the ball. The first meeting you ever have with your quarterbacks should be the, the one and only thing you talk about. It could cover your whole first meeting. Your job is to take care of the football. Take care of the ball. Before you start talking about touchdown passes and mechanics and da 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 take care of the ball. Whether it's in the running game, from the center quarterback exchange, the ball cannot be on the ground. The ball can't be on the ground. It can't be, it can't be fumbled in the snap, and it can't be fumbled when we're uh, handing off. Okay, snap. I think the snap is huge. It's good to be able to know how to coach the snap. You know, to me, it's a lawnmower pulled by the center. He's pulling it up. He's not turning the ball sideways, coming back. He's just pulling it just like he was starting a lawnmower. Bam! 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 And that will naturally turn the ball a quarter turn. That'll turn the ball a quarter turn, just like that. Now, center quarterback placement. Quarterback placement of his hand. He's a righty, and the center's a lefty, or a center's a, a right-hander too. Take that that knuckle right there on your finger, that that uh, pointer finger, should go squarely right in the middle of his asshole. Right in the middle of it. Find the asshole. That's where that thing. That's where that knuckle goes. Right there. So it's offset to the right. You've got a right-handed center. He's pulling it back a quarter turn. That ball's going to come up. He's holding the laces there, quarter turns, he's going to put the ball just like that. And that's how you want to get the ball. The meat of the hand on the meat of the ball. Right like that. So it comes up and it's there. Bam. 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 He takes it and puts it on the laces. Now you got, you're, you're going to have trouble. There's going to be some drop balls. How do you fix that? It's pretty, it's pretty simple how to fix it. First of all, you get the center on the ground, he takes his position, the quarterback puts the knuckle of his finger in the center of the asshole, that's where he's got the ball, he's got, bot he's got, he's got pressure coming from the bottom hand, it's pressuring up the top hand, so he, gets a, he sets the top hand in and lets the center sit on it, so the center's got pressure, he knows where the hand is, the knuckle's in the center of the asshole. Okay, now, the center brings the ball up, and you tell him to bring it up slow. He brings it up slow, and however he brings it up, then the quarterback just takes it, just slightly turns it to where he wants it. And he wants it like that. He wants the feet of his hand and the meat of the ball. So you're on the center, you're the quarterback. It came up kind of like that. It hit you here, or it hit you back here, or it hit you over to the side. And you just say, okay, lighten your grip center. Here's where I want the ball. Right like that. That's how I want it. Now the center still got his hand on the ball. He brings it down. Moves it up again. Quarterback slightly adjusted this time. Brings it back down. So now the center can feel exactly where, how, exactly how the quarterback wants it to can. That's just a pretty good drill to get the center and the quarterback on the same exact page of how to take the snap. And that's critical, okay? <laughs> As we all know. As we all know. Getting the exchange from the center is so critical and 
in every part of football because the quarterback is so much more comfortable when he can just and he doesn't want the hands way up in there buried where it's like where it's like wrist deep underneath the center and he's got to get way up underneath there where he can't see up over the line of scrimmage you know so just that knuckle right on the asshole right in the middle just like that where he can get in a stance where his weight can be slightly on the balls of his feet a little a little uh, air in between his heels. You can take a piece of paper and slide it under his heels. And he can see. A little arc in the back. So his eyes, his eyes can be seeing things. Can be seeing linebackers, seeing secondary. And him knowing that he's going to get the ball right in that spot every time. He doesn't have to be fishing for it. Or he doesn't have to look down to see it. Got to be, it's a, it's a very hard thing to coach a quarterback. Not to look at the snap as it's coming up. <clears throat> Watch your quarterbacks when they're taking snaps. It's a hard thing to break them of, but you want them to be able to take the snap with their eyes here. And their natural reaction is to go, right, am I right on that? That's where they want to put their eyes when, when the ball's coming up. They want to find it. That's the thing you want to train them to do. Have the confidence to know that ball's coming up, hitting them in the meat of the hand, and they can keep their eyes here. Red 88! Red 88! Hut! The eyes are downfield, and you train them where to put, it, put your eyes after that. Okay, so critical. Next thing. Just, yes, sir. Is it the same goes for if you have a left hand quarterback and a right hand center? It, it changes. It changes. <laughs> I did a lot of research on that because I, we had a we had a left-handed uh, we had a left-handed quarterback and a right-handed center. And I talked to talked to a lot of people. Went back and talked to Jerry Hanlon at Michigan. Talked to my guy uh, Les Miles. Talked to Cam Cameron. Talked to a lot of people. Now here's the thing I found to be the best. You got the lefty quarterback and the right-handed center. Change the lefty quarterback to putting his right hand on top. Why is that? I mean, it's just, with the, with, 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 you've trained the center, who's the right-handed center, to pull it up, long more it up, quarter turn the ball, and now for the lefty quarterback to take it like that, oh, it's in between the thumb now. You know, here it comes, it's coming up, now you've got the meat of the ball, for the lefty quarterback, the thumb's in the way. The thumb's there. So that, so that, so now you're, Okay, you don't like that. You don't want to train your right-hander. And all he's got to do, the left he's got to do, to get the laces is for the, the center to adjust so the laces come up to the bottom hand. So he takes it out like that. Okay. Your other option, if you got the righty center and the lefty quarterback, is for the center to a full half turn the ball coming up. He's got to half turn it coming up so now he can get some meat of the ball so he can get his hand on the meat of the ball. But for the righty, the quarter turn comes up and hits him like that. And he goes like that. For the lefty quarterback, with the same quarter turn, bam, the thumb's in the way. So he's got to, the center would have to half turn it for him to have a chance to get the thumb out of the way. That's a great question. And uh, I had to research that out myself last spring. Any other questions so far? Okay, so number one thing for a quarterback is to do what? Protect the ball. Protect the ball. Protect the ball. Your job as a quarterback is to make sure that every time we have an offensive possession, it ends in a kick. It ends with our kicking team. It either ends with a field goal or an extra point, kickoff, or a punt. It's got to end in one, it's got to end in a kick. It can't end in a turnover. It can't end with the ball on the ground, an interception. It can't end that way. Can't end with them kicking, because we threw a pick for a touchdown. It's got to end with our team kicking. That's a graphic way to tell him, hey, it's okay if you throw the ball away on third down. It's okay. Just don't give the team, the, the other team, the ball. Turnover, turnover margin, turnover ratio is the number one statistic that dictates wins or losses. It's the number one statistic by far. Once you go over, once you go over two. 
two, plus two in the NFL, you lose 80% of the time. Zero, zero margin, it's unbelievable. It's 50, there's no turnover margin, it's a 50-50 it's a deal. Home and, home, home and away, I mean, come, comes into play, it's practically 50% when there's no different, when there's no margin of difference in the turnover. So you gotta teach them to protect the ball. On the handoffs, handing the ball off, you can coach it. It's your belt buckle, take the ball, seat it in your belt buckle. On all running plays, you seat the ball in your buck, belt buckle. It goes from your belt, stand up coach. Make a pocket there. It goes from your belt to his belt. Your belt to his belt, and seat it with your eyes. Belt to belt, seat it with your eyes. And then you carry out your play fake. Just like a car dealer. It's like a Vegas car dealer, man. You're right here, you're dealing cards. You got deception, but it goes, but the all, oh, the bottom line, the number one thing is it goes from your belt, you see it go into his belt, it goes from your belt to his belt, belt to belt, seat it in there with your eyes, put it in there with your eyes. That's huge. That's big. I had a big problem coming out of college and even like two, three years in the pros, where I was up here and I go from here to here, here to here, and there's elbows in the way. You know, when the ball comes from up here, there's elbows in the way to get it to there. It's got to it's gotta come down, or it's got to come around, or it's got to do something. But it goes from your belt to his belt, and you put it in there with your eyes, the chance of getting the ball on the ground decreases. All right, now, let's talk about quarterback play. The most important thing with the quarterback, the down, for the down, every down. And this isn't just quarterback, but this is what you're looking for in your quarterback. The quarterback is the challenge player. He's the challenge player on every single possession, every single down. The quarterback is the challenge player because he's going to have his ball in, the hand, in his hands. He's got to do something with the ball. He's got to get it to somebody. He's got to make a throw. He's got to make a conversion. He is the challenge player. Every single down. His attitude. I must win. I must win. I must win. No matter what I'm doing. Oh God. We're in trouble. <laughs> I think I busted. <laughs> <laughs> I must win. I must win. Whether I'm whatever I'm doing, if it's in practice, if it's in a game, I must win. I must beat you. I must win. I must find a way to win. Must win. If I'm throwing one on one, I must win. If it's third down, I must win. I teach these guys, no matter what drill you're in. Thanks, coach. <laughs> I'm sorry, take that out of my check. <laughs> no matter what it is, if he's just dropping back and throwing on air, he's taking a five step drop and we're throwing a curl route to a receiver, he's got to visually imagine that it's third and six. Third and six, I'm in a game. I simulate the snap, I simulate the drop just like I would. I tell myself it's third and six. I must win. I must complete this ball. Don't ever let any quarterbacks throw routes on air or one on ones or anything like that or practically even catch without them thinking that way. Can, cannot have a guy just take a ball. stare a receiver down and act like he's just throwing the ball, you know? I must win. I got a picture, it's third and six, and I must win. I must beat somebody. Every single practice, every single play, whatever it takes, I must win. That's what you want, that's who you want your quarterback to be. That competitive guy, that competitive guy who's so competitive that he's got to win at everything he does. That's your guy. That guy does these things too. He's a player who will accept being pushed. A player who accepts being corrected and will adjust. He's got to be able to adjust. 
quarterback has got to be a good enough athlete to adjust to how you coach him. Some guys aren't. They're just not good enough athletes to take coaching. You know, you got to be able, you got to find that guy that that can learn, that can take it from the chalkboard and take it to the field. You got to accept being corrected. It's not personal. You're doing your job. He's got to know that. Players who practice uh, with intensity and technique to improve performance. They got to know that technique. This is all a technique game. Football is a technique game at every single level. High school, college, pee wee, pro. It's such a technique game. It's a technique game at the quarterback position. Every every way every way that he drops, throwing motion is rhythm. It's repeated. It's a drop that's that's not just fast, but it's smooth. It's and it's repeated every single time. He's got to learn those techniques. However you're coaching him to do it, he's got to be able to repeat it. He's got to improve his technique and his performance. He's not doing it right. He's not doing something well. He's not improving. He's not doing what you ask him. It's like, bro, you're not. You're not. Your way's not working. You got to change it. Your way's not working, you gotta change it. You gotta get him, you gotta get him to do technique. I got that from Jim Brogan too. I'm not gonna take credit for that one. That was a Jim Brogan. If you're not doing something right, change it. Okay, good. You wanna hear about some, wanna see some drills? Some quarterback drills. Give him my best stuff. Yes. We're throwing two receiver. Just as he's dropping, like you know, some coaches. Oh, this foot here. The one, the one front. That one. Yeah. I just, I really teach him to turn every throw into a straight throw. It's a throw at the receiver. Try to turn every throw into it. Now, where this, where this toe points is at the receiver, or it's to the left of the receiver. So you get your hips through. So if I'm throwing at you, and my po toe's pointed there, I got to come through my body. So every throw becomes a throw at you. And the thing you coach there is that the hip, the tit and the shoulder and the shoulder go to the target. That all goes to the target. Hip, tit, and shoulder to the target. That's all I got to tell my guys. Hip, tit, and shoulder. They know what they're doing. They got to bring it at the target. He should feel the sensation when he throws that he's coming off a pitcher's mouth. He should feel like he's coming down off a pitcher's mouth. He's throwing downhill. Everything is throwing downhill. If he's throwing here, or he's throwing with that foot already off the ground, or he's throwing back here and not getting the right side through, I, I, I feel like I'm throwing uphill. I feel like I'm throwing up in the stance, you know? But if I get it, then I feel like I'm throwing downhill. Another way to reinforce that, see you coach. And so many times, like a quarterback, they're all like that. I want to throw just with the arm, just with the arm. No body comes through. Hit me. Don't hit me, really. Though. Stop talking. Right <laughs> if you really want to let, if not, if you really want to hit me. Bam! You loaded up the back leg. See that? Loaded up. If that punch came from right down there, it came from the, it came from the leg, it came from the hip, it came from the tip, it came from the shoulder. Bam! You know what I'm saying? Bam! I don't, I don't want to hit it very hard. Then I just go with the arm, you know? Just reinforce with him. You know, it's all coming. It's right down in here. It's there. And that, that foot naturally comes, just like a pitcher would, coming off of a mound. And when they're throwing together, and they're throwing just like 10, 15 yards apart, that's the time to really overemphasize. Hey, let's overemphasize. Get tit and shoulder to the target. Left foot to the target. And if he's not still not getting it, hey, left foot to the left of the target. So I can get I can get the hips, I can get the 
the hip, the tip, the shoulder, bam, at the target. And overemphasize, even coming off of it, just like a pitcher would coming downhill off a pitcher's mouth. Good, that's a great question. Anything else? As we're going here? Okay. And you can coach really hard to drop. That's the big thing to coach. I spent too much time here already coach, coaching the throwing motion. But to drop, you can coach the hell out of now. Objective, develop a constant rhythm sense of timing, speed and quickness of the quarterback's drop, proper balance, footwork is noted, as well as release action. Technique, the quarterback will set up with a pre-assigned drop. Three, five, seven. Quarterback should always be thinking of a play progression when you're coaching his drop. Throws will vary. Some will be to the number one receiver. Some will be to the number two receiver. Some to the number three receiver. Coach should, coach should observe from different vantage points to see footwork as well as release. Coach may also act as a key for the quarterback to simulate a defender. Say you're throwing a curl flat. You're the flat defender. You either take away the curl or you drop to the flat. See, use one receiver to catch passes. Quarterbacks each have a ball. Take turns throwing, practice drop. Use a snapper if available. Coach aligns himself to note feet, arm action, and release. So a couple examples here. Type of drop, three-step drop. One big, two quick. That's why I would tell him to throw a slant. It's one big, two quick if you're throwing slants. One big, two, three, plant foot, you're throwing slants. Three-step drops are usually timing routes. They're timing drops. They're throwing with a plant. Plant step is without a hitch. That's a hitch, that's a plant. So, most of the time in your three step game, if you're throwing slants and flat, flat routes, that's one, two, three, one big, two quick. And that's how you gotta talk to these guys because every, every route really has its own drop. And that's where you wanna get consistently them repeating the same drop. Okay, what other type of three step drops are there? There's three step. Uh, hitch routes, six yards hitches on the outside. You know, it's again one to get away from the center, and then two quick. One big, the last two of your quickest steps, and the ball's coming out. Anything that's breaking out now, whether it's a five step timing route, three step timing route, those are the quickest you can take. Because you, you don't want anybody breaking on them. And those balls, so say you're throwing a quick out, six yard quick out, they're the three quickest you can take. Say you're throwing a five, uh, a ten yard out cut. Those are the five quickest steps you can take. One, two, three, four, five, plant throw. And you always miss where with the ball? On an outside breaking route. Outside, man. <laughs> if you're going to miss, miss it outside. If the miss is inside, go back the other way. So, whatever routes you got in your three step game, and the three step game is critical because if you, get, if you beat the blitz, you can get your quarterback a completion. It can get him on rhythm. He gets in a funk. He's like not hitting. He's not completing any passes. Back to the three-step game. Let's get him a completion. Let's get him back in rhythm. So practice the hell out of three-step game. It's, it's, it's critical. So whatever your three-step drops are, you know, you're practicing his drops and you're, you're telling him to play. You know, hey Dave, here we go. We're going uh, double wing right, 200 jet dragon, X lion. Okay, so he, he's got a play in mind. You know, we're not just taking three-step drops. He's taking. A three-step drop, knowing the play, saying the play, repeating the play. So, uh, in dragon, or slant, so we're taking one big, two quick, we're repeating it, we're making sure now that the toe is going at the target, even if he's throwing to the left. Hips get open, I throw at, I'm just still throwing straight throws. And that's where you get to different vantage points, and you check and you watch how he's throwing. So, I want to throw a slant route, three-step drop. Stick a receiver out there where the slant would be, and he just catches. You just you just beat balls, you know, 10 balls, 15 balls, and you just watch his drop. Okay, so it's a drop drill. Five steps. One big four quick. I don't really have that one. I have five quicks. Five quick to throw the out. Then the five quickest you can take. And then we have curls and curls and flat routes. To be it'll be three big, two quick. Three big, two quick. One, two, three, four, five. The last two steps are always the smallest steps. They're the ones that get you back on balance. Get you 
back on your balance. I don't like the big third step, one, two, three, four, five, because it's hard to get those last, those last two, two small steps. So three, when I say three big, it is one, two, three, four, five, and the reset. Okay? So timing routes are plant throws. If it's not a timing route, it's with a hitch. Not always going to be a set five seven. Not going to be three uh, three big too small when the guy is, the guy comes off the edge and your receiver's ready. Yeah. So, you know, do you think variations in it? Is, you know, Absolutely. One, two, three, one, and let it go. One, two, one, two big, uh, let it go. Do you do any of those variations? Do you do any straight back? No, I don't. I don't do don't do any straight back pedal. I don't. Straight back pedal is okay as long as you're teaching it and practicing it. You know, you're a straight back pedal because you want to, you know, you you read the coverage and you want to go left with a with a route, and you're teaching it, and you're coaching it, and he's practicing it. Great. You don't do it that way. You know, Rich Gannon when when he was with the Raiders, he would throw a, he would throw a you know a drag slant to the left every day in practice. It'd be you know one big too quick plant pro. You know, we get into team sessions. One, two, three, plant, throw. He'd get in the game sometimes, and then all of a sudden this would come up. They thought they were coming quick. You know, and he wanted to beat them, so he backpedal out. And he only did it in a game, in game situation. His interception rate was like 45% when he backed out. It was unbelievable. Bill Callahan made me go do the study. What's he do when, he, when, he, when he's backpedaling out? He would only do it in like certain blitz situations. But his, his inter he only did it like six times in the season or whatever, but he had like three picks. Did it set eight times and had three interceptions or something like that. As long as you're practicing it, teaching it, is he doing you know, there's a reason why he's doing it, then that's fine. But I just, I'm always that right there. I never was a big back pedal guy. Now, variations in a drop, in a three-step drop, there's no variation to make it quicker. There's no variation to make the, the three-step drop quicker to me you know, unless you're doing a one-step drop, now you're in a different drop. So if you're keying, or say you're keying a, uh, you know, you're just you're just running the the one-step hitch route, and yeah, that's a one-step drop. Or you, you're or you're throwing the bubble screen, that's a one-step drop, and it's practice. But there's you never turn a, to me, you never turn a three-step drop into a one-step drop. We 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 have variations on the spot because a lot of times. We don't have time to wait for him, depending on what kind of line box you got. You don't have time to wait for him to get to 12 before he's up. So what we do is we see the various steps, and we take off and we're supposed to take three big and small, uh -huh. and we stop at the point in front of the receiver, and we get to stop and then let it go. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's how it works. The guy misses the block and he's coming through, you don't have time to go three big and small. And the receiver knows that, and he's running a certain depth because he knows that the yeah, quarterback's going to, somebody's going to miss a block. Uh -huh. That's a side adjustment. Right. Now, now, you, now you're into a whole different deal. Right. You're into a side adjustment. That's the side adjustment we do our drop. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if I got a five-step drop, or I got a seven-step drop, and I know that there's a, there's a Sam backer that's unaccounted for, and he comes, and it becomes a three-step drop. I'm either throwing a hitch, throwing a slant, whatever your side adjustment is, that would be a variation on a drop. But there's, there's no, to me, there's no like, there's no variation other than, God, somebody came free yet. I got, to, I had to escape, or I had to make, get a quick answer, throw. Yeah, then you'd have a variation. But there is the, the variation on a three-step drop is sometimes you got to hold the ball without taking a reset, and you still want to make it a plant throw. Say you're throwing a slant, you're throwing a slant route. You're throwing cover versus cover three, you're reading the flat defender, you got slant and you got shoot. It's one, two, three, plant throw. Two things can happen. It could be a second window throw where he comes open in the second window, or he could be getting pressed, and that throws off the timing. So if you're in a three-step timing throw versus press, or it becomes a second window throw, though, in other words, the, the hole is in the second window. One, two, three, plant, sink, sit, sink, 
explode. That would be a variation to me on holding the ball on a three-step timing route. Good, good. I mean, that's, that's sophisticated stuff. That's really good. It's really good if you can get that coached up. And even on like, here's another variation. You're throwing, you're throwing five, you're throwing ten yard speed outs. And our team blocks them on versus press. The, the out route stays on versus press. The thing I tell the quarterbacks is, now instead of taking a five, five step plant throw, it becomes a five step pitch throw because the timing aspect has changed. Because he's, because he's being bumped at the line of scrimmage. But no, that's good. Anything else? Do I care about depth and drops? I care if it's too deep. You know, I care if it's. Uh, I care if they're not getting away from the center on a three-step drop. But other than that, I'm coaching. I'm coaching steps. You know, five quickest. Gosh, you shouldn't even get the five yards. You know, if you're throwing a speed out. It should be. I mean, it's the five quickest you can take. It's. It's. What you do for five plan? What you do for five plan? Don't even get the five. You know, it's a five quickest you can take, no matter how, how deep you get. Yeah, you can be too deep. You know, you can take a seven step drop that's too deep. Uh, but no, don't don't coach, don't coach the hell out of them. Ah, you gotta get the seven and a half yards on a five step drop. A seven step drop, you gotta be at nine and a half yards. No, don't coach that. Coach seven step drops to be either they're they're extending their they're, they're extending their drop with three big, four quick, you know, or it's, or it's the seven quickest you can take to throw drive routes and timing, because there are some seven step timing routes. But no, nah, don't, don't get into depth. Sprinting out. Oh, that's a good question. Um, play action to the left. Yeah. Turn cut to the left. Okay. Yeah. I basically just just run around. I run around the, the top of the top of the drop. The drop. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Just move the feet, as opposed to getting here and the big turn. Try to keep try to keep a little momentum in the top of the drop. Like that. Now for play action passing for to the left. For a right-handed quarterback, I don't teach the I don't teach the turn that way. I teach the turn back to the call the drive-through fake. So it becomes a drive-through fake, just like you're. So if I'm say I'm running ISO to the left, and I'm opening to the to the hole. Here I'm belt to belt, hand off, and my fake is here, or it's back, or it's on a bootleg. Same thing if I'm throwing. I think we're throwing play action to the left. I'd rather throw play action to the right. You want to throw play action to the left? I'm always turning. I'm trying to get trying to get turned back to that natural throwing motion. So it's there. And I just think it's a lot more effective than just taking all the momentum away. It's just hard to get restarted. It's hard to get them pushing back up into the pocket. That way for me. Yeah, well, an out and up or a hitch and go or whatever. I mean, it's, it's one, two, three because you want to show the three step drop because the corners are going to bite. They're, they're told to read the three step drop. So it's a reset. It's a one, two, three. Just the shoulders, just the shoulders. It doesn't have to be with the ball. One, two, three, the shoulders. And then it's a reset, it's a reset, like that, to get yourself some depth. Because it's tough to, you know, it's not a timing throw. You can't go one, two, three. You're gonna have to get a reset for rhythm. One, two, three, bam, reset, throw. And that just jumps you back, just a, instead of getting you up into the line. Yeah, it's, it's, it, that's a slant. Anything breaking out is quick, three quickest you can take. 
Now, the other three-step drop that coach is the stick route, where the, where the uh, West Coast terms it's a stick route, where the tight end's up to six, flat is coming out soft in versus zone, and he's breaking versus man. Now, that's a big three. It's a bigger three for the plant. So it's a relaxed, it's a, it's a rhythm three. So one, two, three, plant, throw. And now you're getting to that. Because it's not, the, same, the timing's not there like it is on a, on a slant route. And the timing's not there like it is on a, on a, uh, a quick out. So it's like almost every freaking play you have, you gotta coach the, 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 the drop. How do you want the drop to be? And coach it that way every time. You think breaking out and it's a timing throw, you gotta be quick man quick. You know, you want them getting deep into the pocket to throw down field, you know, then you're stretching your seven step drop. You're stretching the thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hitch, hitch, climb the pocket. If it's seven steps and you're throwing a drive route and it's timing, then it's seven pretty quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How do you want him to do it, you know? You gotta decide that the coach it so he does it the same way every time. That, that's 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 the plan. But yeah, there's different there's different depths on three steps. There's different depths on five steps. There's different ways to drop on seven step drop. Oh, you mean that this kind of thing? Yeah. No, because I don't want to get into the tackle. The way to build the way I, the way I teach to throw to the left. This is good stuff. This is really good stuff we're talking about. You want to throw left. You gotta get the hips open to the left and ready to throw to the left. So the first mistake they'll make when they're throwing to the left is they'll go like this. One, two, three, and then they'll turn and throw it like that. Which is a problem because you're one, two, three, now your shoulder's gotta come all the way from here, and sometimes the leg, toes pointed. You know, you want that toe to get all the way back to there. So you got a problem, you got a lot of, a lot of variables, a lot of things can happen going all that way, you know? So left, I'm throwing drag, I'm throwing dragon, I'm throwing slant, and shoot to the left. I better get my, I better get my fucking eyes over there. I better see what's going on over there, you know what I'm saying? I mean, don't teach them to look off those kind of routes. Don't say, hey, you better keep your eyes on the free safety, one, two, three, plant, and expect him to hit, to hit a plant throw, and then see a flat defender. Tell him where to put his eyes. I got, I got slant and I got shoot to the left. I'll take one step with my, with my striping my helmet down the, down the middle, and then the next two, I'm looking. I'm seeing what that flat defender is going to do. So first, you get your eyes there to the left. If you're throwing to the left, get your eyes there. See what that flat defender is doing. What? Now get your hips ready to make that throw. Open them up. Open them up. Now I can throw just like it's a straight throw. Feel me? Pose a... Woo! Well, that, now he doesn't see what's going over there. He doesn't see, he doesn't see what's been happening. Now he's got to move his eyes and his whole body over. That's a lot of stuff that can go wrong there. So throwing to the left, you really got to teach them on where to put their eyes. You know? When we teach dragons, just straight slants and shoots, it's a cover three. It's a cover three. Safety roll. I want to work away from the strong safety because I think the wheel backer is not a good athlete as the strong safety is. So even though it's balanced pretty much, I'll still work away from the strong safety because he's a better flat defender. So as soon as I see him go that way, whoo, my eyes are there, seeing what's going on with that flat defender, with that wheel backer. He takes the shoot, his hips go like that, I'm throwing the slant off his ear. He backs up into the slant. Walk us out to the shoot. So on, on, on most three step throws, you want to treat with your three step three, you don't have to look off your three step throws. No, not looking, not looking off any three step throws. You got there's there's somebody that you're like stick, you're throwing stick, stick route with a with a shoot, stick and a flat, whatever you call it. You know, you, there's a backer that's gonna attach to the stick and there's a flat defender. <coughs> if the shoot outflanks the flat defender, one, two, three, give it to him. If he doesn't, then I'm back into the stick. Now, if it's not there when I'm ready to throw, then I reset to over the ball. But yeah, the, the progression, when you're teaching progression, I think we're getting into that a little later tonight, but uh, when you're teaching progression, it's the eyes and the feet 
to tell you when to move from number one to number two to number three. You know, you got a throwing lane. <laughs> you know, if it's a, I'll give you the well. We've been talking about, we've been talking about square outs, usually a middle read of some kind versus cover two. They're going post versus cover three. They're running a 14-yard basic, and you got two backs. Call them running stop routes. So it's five quickest you can take to throw to the, your your best look side, whatever out you want to throw, away from coverage or to the shorter throw or to the better receiver or to the worst corner, the best look side you're going to, say it's to my left, one, two, three, four, five, I go to plant, it's there, I throw it. I go one, two, three, four, five, it's not there, first hitch is to the basic, or the middle read, second hitch is to the stop. And your, and your feet will tell you when to get off of that guy, and your eyes will tell you when to get off of him. So I go back to throw the out route, it's not there, I've already hit, hit my hitch, I hitch, now I throw it, it's not there, then I hitch again to number three. Sometimes you're hitching the number one, and you're hitching the number two, and the third hitch is to number three. But if you can, if you can coach your guys to tie in footwork and hitches into the progression, all they got to do is be able to count to three, and they can play. It's a one, two, three read. One, there, throw. One, not there. Two, throw it if he's there. He's not. One, he's not there. Two, he's not there. Three, I got my check down. Yeah, that, if, you can teach, if you can teach progression that way, teach him, hey, bud. Hey, bud, if you can count to three, you can play my system. <laughs> and you got a pretty good, you got a pretty good passing system. You know, because you're telling him, he's t his feet are telling him when to move to number two and when to move to number three. And you got a, you got a, you got a, a passing system where your quarterback is going back, waiting for the guy to come open. You know, there's a lot of bad stuff that's going to happen. It's good, good stuff. Consistently throw the slant. Well, number one is to get the receiver to do exactly what you want them to do every single time. That's big. Now, there's two ways to run the slant are, you know, outside foot back, and you run the balls in there. One, two, three, slant at a 45 degree angle, but preferably flatter. You know, even the flatter the better. So it's one, two, Slant, I'm coming in. I can almost see some numbers. <laughs> you know, if my guy's running it right, I can almost see some of his numbers. So as a quarterback, I know I know to throw that ball one foot in front of the in front of the upfield number. That's where you want that's where you want slants hit. Bam, and he can take it and run. Okay. Um, most guys will run slants one, two, three, vertical, and now corners start to undercut them, and that's a problem. I like flatter the better. I like running through some of those zone windows. If you're coming flat, there's the first window, there's a backer, there's the second window. So consistency in the receiver's routes, number one. Now, at USD, I teach them inside foot back, I teach them inside foot back and a four-step slant. Because I want them, I want to drive them and get them off the grass. I want them, I want them driven upfield. So it's one, two, three, four. And there's the slant, you know, coming at that flat angle. Does that make sense? You know, whether they're teaching a three-step slant or a four-step slant, let's get the receivers really consistent first. And then it goes back to the quarterback's drop. You know, one, two, three, plant throw. Or if it's a second window throw, or he's bumped, one, two, three, sit, sink, explode. Do you keep that consistent on all the time that you're outside? Change it, I change it all around. It's, it's only it's, I, only on slants I tell them to put their inside foot back. And they'll put their inside foot back. They'll, they'll get changed and they can do it however they want to do it. You know? And they'll, they, they'll change it up sometimes if they're getting bumped, you know, because they want to take the two steps, you know, however they're, they're comfortable. 
you know, they, they're, they're varying that and changing that. But on slants, it's inside foot back with a four step slant. Good. What about sprint out? Man, as far as coaching sprint out, you know, it's really, it's really, I coach the steps on the sprint out too. So if we're throwing the, uh, we're throwing a, one of our favorite routes, sprint right option in the West Coast system, you know, which is curl, two step out, you know, it, it, you, you count the steps again. So it's come out, 45 degree angle, there's one, two, three, four, five, you throw the quick out, six, seven, you throw the curl. We're counting, we're counting steps all the time. You know, try to make, trying to make it as, as uniform and repeating as you can. Is that, that, is that enough? Or are you looking for something else on sprint out? Shoulders, shoulders toward the target and all that? Okay, good, I got a drill for that. Different ways to throw a sprint out to get the uh, develop the quarterback's passing technique while spring out and scramble out of the pocket. QB is taught to attack his target. This means whenever possible, run towards the receiver to avoid throwing across his body, carry the ball high with the eyes up field. Coach knows quarterback uh, throwing off the proper foot. So always the proper foot is the right foot. It's the right foot. Let's get the right foot in the ground to throw on the run. And that's big. You know, shoulders at the target are big. Getting that right foot in the ground before you throw on the run is huge. I've seen, I've seen some pro guys. Who's that coach? T. Martin. He would throw like that. You know, the, la the left foot was the last one to leave the ground. It's always the right foot. Stick that right foot in the ground when throwing on the run. Okay, so just a little drill, probably seen it. One ball is used with two lines, QB facing each other. The ball starts on one side, QB throws to the other QB in front of the other line, follows his pass and lines up behind the other. Fun drill for the quarterbacks, get their legs loosened up uh, pre-practice, off-season when you're throwing. Then you, you add a little sprint out variation to the right. So you're in the middle of the field, we're not there toward the hash. There's the quarterback on that hash, throw it to him, he catches it, takes it. Prints out to the other, you just keep the line, line moving around. Are there any other questions there? You like that drill? Anybody do that one? Not really revolutionary. Huh? Good. Not a revolutionary drill. I'll give you one, I'll give you an out of the pocket drill that is pretty good though. May not have seen. Drop down beneath the overhead. Yeah, bunch of yeah. 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 Develop the quarterback's ability to throw to the receiver that he anticipates is coming open. So let's anticipate a guy coming open. Technique, QB learns to throw to the receiver before the receiver is open. Hitting the intended receiver in stride by releasing the ball while the quarterback vision is blocked by a screen. The quarterback takes appropriate drop in a specific play. Towards the end of his drop, the receiver runs from right to left or left to right behind the screen that blocks the quarterback's vision. Example, two-jet flanker drive. Simple drive route. So, I'm making a throw here. A good thrower. Okay. So I'm the receiver. It's good for the receivers too, because they they learn that going basically a drive route is a six yard route that's crossing the formation, coming out the other end. You got defensive linemen. Sometimes you got linebackers that are dropping. But a quarterback's got to realize quarter uh, linebackers' hips and depth are like this. Receivers running behind him. That when he gets behind him, he's open. He's not open. Way out here, you're gonna have to wait till way out here because there's somebody else out there. So you want to hit him. Ball, you want the ball to play right there. So there's, there's where he's open. Hips like this, receiver's open right here. 
So here's the drill. No, don't throw it yet. So receiver's running. The quarterback's taking his drop. It's a seven-step drop or a five-step drop. Go, he starts dropping. And you want, to see, you want to see that quarterback hit the receiver as close to that target as possible. Okay? So quarterback's dropping. Hup. Hey, what happened to your hands? <laughs> that was a good ball. That was a good ball. <laughs> you got the idea that you come from the other side. Good, good, good drill for receivers, too. Anybody ever use that one? Yeah? That's a good one. Anybody use that drill? You know, I've, I've made them. I've made them to, like, you know, it's you wanted about, you know, about that cut, about that length. So it's about a, it's a six foot freeze. Yeah, you just want it to be above the receiver's heads, you know, so you know, it's pretty much to the ground where they can't see the legs. You know, it's just a screen. Sometimes you know, I've used dummies before, just put up, you know, like five dummies before I had a screen made. Well, you know, just a PV pipe uh, with uh, you know, a little elastic and just made a screen, you know. Whatever you want to, oh, there's a good screen right there. You know, a lacrosse, you ever seen those lacrosse nets? Dump a tarp over one of those, and you got a nice screen. You got some of those high dummies. You know, you got some of those. Uh, I've also used before. I was at the Raiders. I used one of those. And one of those lifts. It goes up up for the film. Had them run behind the lift. You know, that was good. Just something that blocks off. You know, that that simulates a linebacker. You know, and a guy coming from behind him and getting a quarterback to be able to anticipate when he's going to come open and lead him leading the guy open. Now the next phase of that is this. You take the quarterback back, drop him at five, and now there's no timing to it. But you, stand the, you stand the receiver here, when the quarterback when the coach is back there, he says, go, he just pops out. And he just pops out. So now the quarterback's got to be there. Bam, as soon as he sees him. Doesn't know what side he's coming out, but from the time he sees him open, the time he can get the ball to him is big. That's quick. Okay? Got my Ken Cody drill? Thanks. Find the uh, quick release drill next. Be great. Here's the Ken Cody drill. We're talking about out of the pocket decision making. You want to teach a quarterback to never take a sack, never throw an interception when he's out of the pocket. You can always throw it away, and you can, you can always throw it away. So he doesn't have to take a sack. And he doesn't have to throw an interception when he's out of the pocket. Develop the QB's decision making process while out of the pocket. QB learns to throw upfield, throw the ball away, or run with the ball. One of those three things. Two receivers are placed on the field, one near the sideline about 10 yards. The other at the first down marker is placed on the sideline. The wide receiver will take turns pop, popping their hands up, indicating when if they want the ball thrown to them. If neither receiver pops his arm his hands up, the QB will run with the ball and make the first down. If the rusher cuts him off, the QB will throw the ball away to avoid the sack procedure. After a five-step drop, the QB escapes toward the wide receivers. If one pops his hands open, the QB throws it to him. If no one is open, the QB tucks the ball away and runs for the first down. If the QB feels he cannot make it, if he's pulled up, then he's got to throw the ball away. So you get a, uh, if, you get a if you have a rusher, that's great, or if you just tell, tell him to you know, go through a you know, you move him in the pocket, then you get him out of the pocket. That's another way to do it with a coach there. And then you need a rusher here and two receivers. So these guys are placed over here about 10, 15 yards, 10, 15 yards. As the quarterback gets out of the pocket, you point to one of them, say hands up, and the QB's out of the pocket, his hands go up. Now if you say no, keep your hands down, and the quarterback knows he's got to scramble with the ball or he's got to, uh, he's got to throw the ball away. Okay, so if you have a, you need a, you need somebody here to either let the quarterback get outside of you, stay on the run, or you pull him up, get in his way, so he's got to throw the ball away. Anybody understand that? Okay, so how it goes is I got a receiver there, and I got a receiver in the green shirt. Okay, let's say hands are up. I'm gonna get out. So the quarterback drops back. You move him in the pocket, then you tell him to escape. He escapes. If I can get outside the rusher, I stay on the move until I'm pulled up, I see the hands go up, 
and throw him the ball. Okay, now the coach is the rusher. So you get him around, you move him in the pocket, you say escape. Now he pulls me up, the receiver's hands are down, I gotta throw the ball out of bounds. Now I come out of the pocket, I get around the coach, he lets me outside, the receiver's hands are down, nobody's pulling me up, I stay on the run, I see the first down, I attack the first down marker, and I get out of bounds. Good drill. So Mike, Mike Holmes is really. On a flush out situation. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's if you got if you can if you institute a scramble drill, you know then then you have whatever your scramble drill is, whatever you teach. You know it's like if you're if you're an up receiver on the sideline, the quarterback's coming to you, you're five yards from the line of scrimmage, you want to take it deep. If you're on the back side of a route and the quarterback scrambles away from you, you mirror the quarterback. So now you get somebody going deep, you get somebody. Uh, Mirror in the quarterback, and if you're deep, then you come back to the quarterback. And it's a, it's a scramble drill. Has anybody got that? Anybody got a scramble drill? Good thing to coach, good thing to teach. Definitely in the red zone, have a scramble drill. Red zone scrambles are huge. More plays are made in the red zone off the scramble than, than any other. You gotta have a red zone scramble drill. So anyway, quarterback's coming to you, you're short, you go deep. If you're deep, you come back. If you're on the back side, you mirror the quarterback, whatever your route is, and you just practice that. Plus the quarterback out one way or the other, okay? Any other questions on the Ken Cody drill? Anybody like that? You want to see how it works? You a quarterback volunteer? You want to be a quarterback volunteer? He's a quarterback? Okay. So you go five step. I think that way you can do like half speed. Got the green shirt to receiver. And who's by the receiver right there? Okay, here we go. Okay, take five steps. Step up. Right. Get out. Go away. Go away. Broke another one. You want to keep all that? the same part. You know, you're not going to go down here to the up. If you do get pulled up, there's nobody open downfield, the ball's got to go out of bounds. Okay, let's try her again. Step up, get out. If he gets outside of me, you're not pulled up, you stay on the move until you see somebody open before you get to the first down. Put a cone out there where the first down is, and he is running for the first down and getting out of bounds. Like it or not? You like that one? No, usually it's where the first thing, yeah. You gotta know in his mind where the line of scrimmage is. They should, they should get to the point where they never, they only have to ever look for the line of scrimmage, they just, they just know it and feel it. The real good ones, I mean, they just always know where the line of scrimmage is. They never go over it though. You know, they just, they just know where it's at. They just try to ingrain in them that they know where the line of scrimmage is. Like far, he's the best. He's the best at everything. Find that one? No, the, the quick release? Can you see that one? Hey, one more pretty cool drill for you here. Get a little two hand on the ball drill. You line your quarterbacks in a line here with bags, quarterback drop, just like you do your, uh, your running back through the shoot, you're grabbing at the ball. It's a good drill to do with your quarterbacks too. So you set them on a five step drop, you, know, you got your other quarterbacks back here with bags, and he goes through the gauntlet. You're, you're grabbing at the ball, hitting the ball, and then it comes back up into the pocket while he's climbing the pocket. They're trying to hit the ball out of his hands. Teach him to keep two hands on the ball. Yes, 
Drill. Objective. Develop the quarterback's mechanics regarding his hands, head and feet, and making a run play. Then drop him back to the appropriate depth. Technique. There's three different techniques to be taught. A ball fake, a jab fake, and a hand fake. Three different ways to fake a ball. My preference, the number one way I like to fake is a jab fake. It's just a jab. Two hands on the ball, find the laces, and it's just a jab. I get as close to his pass as I can without hitting him. Just jab it in there. You barely brush by it. I think that's the most consistent way. Whether you're faking to the left, you're faking to the right, or you're faking a bootleg, jab fake. Other ways to fake the ball. Ball fake. When the ball goes in and the power comes out and the hand and the hand rides. It's a good fake. Teach the quarterback, lick the back of the hand, wipe the spit off the back of the hand with the jersey of the back. So it goes in, wipe it off, and then you go with, and then the hand, the hand trails. Third way to do it is just a just a just a hand fake. Ball gets seated into the belly, and you cross fake it. That, not a big proponent of it, because I never like to take the hand off the ball going to the left. So to me, it's always good. So if you're always a jab faker in any kind of play action, you'll be in good shape. The, uh, the, other, the other old one, sometimes on the bootleg fake, you get a guy that's good at it, a one handed fake. Can be good, can be effective because you don't have to go you don't have to take the, the hand off the ball so now you can to a backside rush defender to a backside defender you can fake pull it back and he doesn't know if you have the ball if you keep your backside arm in so basically when you're and the key is when you're handing off the biggest thing is when you're handing if you want to help your play action game is when you're actually handing a ball off Keep the backside arm from coming free. So you guys are all you guys are all defenders. And I go and I hand off and I give. There's no ball there. Every defender on the field knows they don't have the ball because you can see both my hands. If I can fake, keep the back, the, the, the left elbow tucked in. You can't see if I got the ball or not. Tucked in. Now I hand off, he doesn't know that I left the ball in the left hand. And if you, can get him to, if you can't get him to do it, tell him, grab the jersey. Grab the jersey, keep the left elbow tucked in. And that's a big, a big plus in the running game. You can not show the backside defender that you don't have the ball. Tuck, grab jersey, hand off. I do boot like that, you gotta see you can show them, but you don't have to call Okay, then we got five minutes, so if there's any questions. Doesn't the, the, the run series dictate how you handle the ball fake? You're not gonna jab, you're gonna have to stretch. Like the zone, the, yeah, yeah. If you're running, if you're a zone team, and you gotta run 98 stretch, or 98, you yeah, have zone, and yes, the ball has gotta go. Now, out. Now out. You got a bootleg off of that, and the one, the one-handed fake, the one-handed fake in, in bootlegs, like I just said, you know, is is effective. Now, if you run an inside zone, you know, you can still jab fake and run the run the naked. But if you got if you do have a naked off your wide zone play, and that's good. I mean, that's a hell of a. You got a pretty good quarterback that can come that flat down the line, get that wide, and then then bootleg fake from there. But it is. I mean, nobody does it better than Peyton Manning. And that's, you know, he's the, you know, Steve DeBerg, the way he used to do it. The crotch fake. The good crotch fake. I mean, that's great stuff. You got a guy that can do it. You can teach that. That's good. I think, for me, the most consistent way is to jab, be close to his pads, and you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. When you're, on, when you're running a bootleg, where do you hold the ball? 
Oh, after you fake? Man, you get it, you get it into your throwing hand right now, you jab fake it, now you got the thing right into the throwing hand. You know? So you're, that's a good thing about jab faking, is you can place the ball how you want to throw it. So it's there, it's a jab fake. Then when I when you where you place it when you after you boot leg? Yeah, no. No, no. I just I put it here. Now I'm gonna get my eyes around because there might be a defender that's coming at me. So rather than people spend too much time with the fake there, eyes, get the eyes around, somebody might be coming at you. Now the whole coaching on the bootleg is once you fake, you made that turn, you don't pull up until you're pulled up. Don't stop the throw back until you are pulled up. You're trying to, you're trying to outflank the defense. And the whole read is flat to over, back to flat. In most bootlegs, in most bootlegs that you run, you got a flat runner, you got an over runner, and, you, and, you, and your flat runner is number before you run with the ball, you go back to the flat because they come open. So you go here, eyes are on the flat, he's open, I give it to him, he's not open, I go to the over, he's, the, he's covered, I go back to the flat because that defender will have left that flat runner. And if he has it, then you're number three and you run with the football. <coughs> now if you're pulled up, if you're pulled up on a bootleg, and you're not, so you get here, now you put, if there's somebody there, you have to keep giving depth, and you might be able to make a flat throw by finishing with your arm. And if you can't, then you keep giving depth and you throw it away. So there's a guy coming rushing up on me up upfield, keep giving ground, and I make the flat throw. The flat's not there, he's on me, and I throw it out of bounds. If I can outflank, if I can get outside of the defense, then I go. Flat, to over, back to flat, run. One minute. One last question. As far as like a straight drive flash, you teach the quarterback to stop the feet and they fake, or you teach them all to run through it. Dive, like dive options? Well, just like, yeah, just back, like the 21, you fake that, you teach them to stop the feet and they fake, or you follow them to run through it. 21, like? Like, just turn it open and then you fake there and you teach them to stop the feet. Oh, fake it, fake it to the back right there? Yeah. Uh, and then he's going to run a drop back play action pass? Well, the only, the, only, the only thing we really stop our feet on is any kind of option, you know, that kind of thing. But most of the times, is it a three-step drop you're running? Yeah. You're running a quick dive, so you got somebody there you want to fake to them, yeah. and you're on a three-step drop. Any kind of three-step drop fake, really tell them to let the backs do the fake. You know, you can fake with your eyes, just a little quick little jab. But you're in, you're in a three-step timing route that you can't be late on, so you can't spend any time stopping your feet and then getting back. So a lot of times, if it's a three-step drop, we're running like a slide protection with a pullback on the mic, the halfback on the sand, let the backs, let the backs, backs do the faking. 